Hello, my name is Nika Alexander. I'm a communications person here at the World Health Organization. Today, we're going to talk about clinical management uh, for people who are sick with the new coronavirus, with the novel coronavirus. Um, I won't be doing most of the speaking. It will be my colleague, Dr. Janet Diaz. Janet, do you want to introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Janet Diaz. I'm uh, the team lead for clinical management at the WHO Emergency Program. And um, so, Clinical management means how you care for a patient who's sick, right? It's the, mm -hmm. the treatment. So this could be a very uh, specific kind of conversation we're having today for healthcare workers, but we want this to be interesting both for healthcare workers and for the general public. So hopefully you will, it will be of, interesting, uh, of interest to anybody who wants to learn more about this disease, but it really is more about that specific topic of how patients are cared for. Um, so this is a new disease. Uh, I want to timestamp this a little bit. We're recording this on the 1st of February. At the moment, there are 12,000 cases of the disease um, in China, 12,000 cases in China, and 130 cases in 23 other countries. So it really is centered in China at the moment, but people are working together to learn more. So how do you learn more about a disease which at this point is, is one month old? We've only known about it for one month. Well, that's a, it's a challenging uh, situation, but uh, with the WHO, we um, have established a <coughs> global clinical network. So we are in touch with uh, at least twice a week, um, but more so by email, uh, on a large teleconference calls with clinicians that are actually caring for the patients, clinicians um, you know, from China, from Wuhan, um, from Shanghai, as well as uh, clinicians from France and the US and the other countries that have been caring for patients. And it's an opportunity for everyone to share how, what it's like to care for those patients, what they're doing, uh, what they're presenting with, what their symptoms are, what their complications are. And so what do we know? What have you learned so far? So it seems that at large that the, that the disease is a, a leads to a mild illness. So most patients are mildly ill, which means they have um, maybe a fever, cough, sore throat, um, muscle aches. But there is a percentage that does get severely ill. Um, we think it's about 20%, um, but we will see uh, those patients go on to develop severe pneumonia. They can also develop um, uh, dehydration, uh, respiratory failure, which means that they um, would need a breathing machine to help them uh, continue breathing. Um, and there have been deaths. About, at the moment, um, what we understand from Chinese authorities is about 2% of the people um, for which they have information, 2% of the patients in China have died. Is yes. that about right? Yes. Okay, so that again, timestamp for this time. Um, this is one month after we've known about the disease mm -hmm. and information may change and evolve as time goes on. Exactly, I mean, I think for those, there's patients that remain in hospital, so we have to see what their outcomes will be after um, being in the hospital. Um, so that you just uh, summarized what we do know. So. Most For most people, it's a mild disease, about 20% mm -hmm. severe and mm -hmm. about 2% have died. What do you not know? What are the questions you're trying to get answers on? Well, we, we also have, a, have an idea that those that are, have died with disease tend to be of older age and have uh, chronic uh, other medical conditions um, such as diabetes. Um, but we would like to have a better uh, understanding of that, so that's what we need to know. So truly, what are the risk factors for severe disease? What are the risk factors for, um, for death? Um, we also need to know what, is, what treatments would work, what antiviral treatments would work for this uh, novel coronavirus. At the moment, there is no specific treatment. There's not uh, an existing medication that you can pull off the shelves and say, this works for people who are sick with NCOV, with the new coronavirus. So with this new coronavirus, we have no known effective um, antiviral therapies. There are some that um, are p have potential, we think may work, but we have no known effective antiviral therapies. So what do you do? What are these, these doctors that you're speaking with in China and elsewhere, how are they treating these patients? So because the patients that are mild at large, that they have um, you know, self-limiting disease, which means they get better um, with some time, so they get treated you know, with uh, symptomatic treatments such as paracetamol for fevers. Or for those that get sick in hospital, then they require supportive care treatment. So this may be on the hospital ward or in the intensive care ward. That would mean if you have pneumonia and you need um, oxygen therapy, you get oxygen therapy. If you need IV fluid therapy, you get intravenous fluid therapy. If you 
are suspected to have an infection, a, a co-infection, so in addition to the novel coronavirus, a bacterial infection, which can happen, then we give you antibiotics. Um, and if you develop respiratory failure, you go on mechanical ventilation. So I just want to be really clear on this antibiotic side, because this is a virus. You can't treat viruses with antibiotics. But as you said, if the person has this virus and a bacteria, you give them the antibiotics to treat the bacteria. Exactly. Okay. Um, what are we doing then to find a specific treatment? So WHO is working uh, nonstop with global experts. Uh, we have the uh, R&D blueprint, which is accelerating research during outbreaks. And they have assembled multiple uh, also meetings, teleconference meetings with global experts on research. And there are two main outputs that will come out of that. One is the prioritization of potential therapeutics. So based on the evidence, what therapeutics are, that are out there or in pipeline, you know, in development, should we uh, use focus in a clinical on. trial? Yeah, focus on, like use to treat patients. And the second aspect is a development of a master clinical trial protocol, which is the best way to test new therapeutics for efficacy and safety. So for a general public, I just want to uh, mm -hmm. simplify the language a little bit there. You said WHO has an R&D blueprint. It's like a group that works on research and development, mm -hmm. if that sounds right. Yes. And then uh, what is a clinical trial in this uh, context? I think um, before I came to WHO, I thought a clinical trial was about chemicals and you know pipettes and whatnot, but it's actually um, establishing a way of some patients treated with this, some patients treated with that, and then comparing their outcomes? Or how does a clinical trial work in this context? Yeah, I think um, what you've described is, 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 is true. Um, so what we are doing with the global experts is uh, developing a master protocol, uh, which um, has clear uh, protocol on how you use these new therapeutics because uh, they need to be tested. Um, patients. Uh, will get randomized into one treatment group or another treatment group, depending on what the final protocol determines. Um, and that's about how it works. And consent's always a question people wonder about as oh, well. If course. someone's in a trial, do they have their, do they give their agreement to be part of that? But these trials are always reviewed for ethics and there's a consent. Oh yeah, so any, well. any clinical well. trial has uh, informed consent uh, involved in ethics approval at the country level. So um, we're in the early phases, so I just, you know, we're developing the master trial protocol with global experts. Okay, that's the stage we're at now. Um, we're going to wrap up soon, but what would be your advice, uh, Dr. Diaz, for healthcare workers who are watching and who are interested and want to know what to do if there's a patient or they think somebody might be a patient with this disease in their healthcare setting? So I think to start off with, it's important to get familiarized the, with the WHO website. It uh, has a lot of useful technical guidance documents to inform about the disease and um, how to uh, treat the disease and how to prevent the spread of disease. Uh, for those of you that are actually healthcare workers or, or if you're a patient, I think the most important thing is to um, recognize a potential person that may have uh, novel coronavirus. We have the case definitions on the website so you can read those and you post those in the clinic and then you know. Um, if you suspect someone may have the virus, uh, then uh, quick action is to uh, isolate and, and prevent further spread of the virus and we have guidelines on that. And then if someone is very sick with the virus, with the severe complications, then initiate uh, supportive care treatments like I described below before. So this is for healthcare workers. Mm -hmm. We're not saying members of the public should be identifying people who are sick no. and I say this is really for health workers. I think for members of the public, you know, if you develop a fever, cough, or shortness of breath, then you must seek medical care and, you know, advise if you have traveled uh, to, to the affected to areas. The affected areas. Um, yeah. Thank you. So that's um, at the moment, as we said, the 1st of February when we're recording this with the knowledge we have now, um, the outbreak is mostly in China. The vast majority of cases are in China. Um, the cases in other countries have a, a travel history or link to China, again, mostly. Um, and as Dr. Diaz said, uh, for the, the, the focus is really on people in China to listen to what the national health authorities are saying and when you should go to a healthcare center versus staying at home because sometimes the disease is mild. And then for mm -hmm. people elsewhere in the world, fever, cough, and difficulty breathing, you should seek medical advice on what you should do next.
Is that a good summary? Yes. Um, and you mentioned that more information can be found. That's at who.int. We're improving the website, adding more information as we go along. But there is information for if you're traveling, um, uh, protective advice for yourself. And there's a lot of guidelines for uh, ministries of health and health workers and so on. So thank you so much for watching today. And thank you for being with us. One thing, actually, one more I should add is that this is a more of a general kind of discussion we had. But we're also developing, WHO is developing courses and has more um, detailed information really for healthcare workers that is um, more specific and really meant for you and to help you in your work. Thank you very much and um, check back often for more information. Bye-bye. Thanks again. Thank you.